Hey, good afternoon. Kip T. Sword here with Chronicles of a Culture Changer, and uh, I want to I want to talk about something this afternoon uh, that has to do with edged weapons. And basically, I want to if what I'm trying to do is protect providers, I need to protect you on multiple levels. Remember, we said we've got to have the battle of the mind. That's things like what's the difference between a patient and an attacker, and what things are reasonable, and that sort of stuff. When is it okay to defend myself? So those are all things that I have to do with the mind. Then you have the street stuff, which is number two: skills that work more often than not to escape a violent encounter, not beat someone up, not win, not to destroy not choke out submit our opponent but stuff that works for escaping on the job encounters so that was number two number three is the media we have to make sure that everything we do looks good if it's caught on camera and number four is the courts meaning not only the real court but that the court of public opinion so you better be prepared for all four areas if you're working about uh, anything that has to do with self-defense and medicine so with that said um, there was an incident not all that long ago in LaGrange, Georgia, where a paramedic was being attacked. He removes a knife from his person and he stabs his attacker. Now, we've talked about this in a few different places. We go uh, speaking around the country and also have links to it on our website. But what I wanted to address was something very interesting because I tried to make a phone call to the folks at uh, AMR where it happened and I was trying to make sure that I shared some advice with their staff members and I want to help and, and share that advice with you right now. There's some tricks that uh, you might be lulled into saying if, uh, if and when you know you had to go to court if you ever decided to use a improvised weapon such as a pocket knife as a self defense tool, and one of those things that you might be asked is you know why would you carry that knife and if you get roped into saying something like uh, I carry it to cut seatbelts, okay. Did you try to push the button first to release the seatbelt? The next thing is, well, if you were using a knife to cut a seatbelt, why weren't you using either your safety scissors, your safety shears, or why didn't you use a commercially created seatbelt cutter? So there uh, were some incidents uh, that have occurred where people have attempted to use a knife and have actually injured people while supposedly using it as a rescue tool. So be careful about being lulled into that one. The thing is, when I ask about it around the country and I say, well, why do you really carry that knife? You can eventually get people to admit why they're really carrying it once they get past all the political answers. Of, they'll tell you that they're carrying it as a, as a self-defense tool. So with that said, um, you need to make sure that you understand that uh, you're going to try to be roped into that type of questioning or giving that type of an answer. And that if you're going to carry a knife, a knife is a tool. It's just like any other tool, whether it be a screwdriver, a, a, you know, a, a wrench. It happens to just be a tool. It's the same as a flashlight. If a person was carrying a flashlight, one of those aluminum heavy-duty flashlights, it's a flashlight. It was designed as a flashlight. But in an emergent situation, you may have used it as an impact tool or an impact weapon for as an improvised tool. So with that, uh, that out of the way, what I want to say is this. Let me talk about an, uh, a tool, uh, a knife for just a minute. When uh, as a police officer, I went through the police academy and then all the stuff that I did with Taekwondo and Karate and even in the stuff that I was taking with Judo and things like that. Nothing made me feel comfortable against an edged weapon. So what I did was I started seeking out what really made sense. So I started training um, with the Filipino martial arts where we're working with edged weapons because I wanted to learn. If you learn to use the tool, you can learn to defend against the tool. That was my, my perception and my belief. And uh, you know, ask anybody that's trained with us over the years and they'll tell you what they think about my ability to use or defend against an edge weapon. I'm not a ninja, I'm not a tough guy, and I don't claim to be some master at it, but you let them tell you what they think. So anyway, uh, with that, you also need to research what kind of a tool would you carry and uh, the specifics of that. And there are a lot of things marketed right now on uh, the web, the interweb. <laughs> But there's a lot of things that are that are marketed on the web that they're trying to market either uh, pocket knife to police officers, EMS, or fire departments. And I need you to be careful because there was even one that I saw that was a SWAT version of a knife, supposedly, and uh, it was smooth. So the outside of it's smooth, it's black, you know, and smooth and blah, blah. So that's the, the widget theory. They paint it black, they sell it to law enforcement. They paint it blue, they sell it to EMS. We paint it red, we'll sell it to fire. But with that, think about it like this. If a knife... Uh, tool was smooth, you know, say it was smooth, like even the back of this disc, you know, and it, your hands were wet, sweaty, covered with blood, uh, it, the knife is just going to fly out of your hand. There's not going to be any real control to that. So you want to make sure that if you're looking for an edged weapon that it has some sort of a grip that will allow you to maintain the grip if your hands are, have, are, have sweat on them or blood on them. The next thing I would really recommend that you look for would be something that, that if, if the knife is open, that it doesn't turn around and have the ability to close easily on your hands. 
So if I've got this, uh, this knife here, this one has an axis lock. The axis lock is what doesn't allow this blade to collapse until I pull the pin out of the way. The importance of this is, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the, the knives that have the uh, release mechanism that runs down here, and then you've seen the old knives that have it to where you can release it here. This particular edged weapon makes it, or knife actually makes it to where I can do it with one hand, one hand open and closing. So I'm sure a few of you may have already seen the little trick that I have here. That's a poor man's wave feature. If uh, you can research wave feature, a lot of knives get a lot more expensive because they have a wave feature. Here I'm using a very quality knife. Uh, it's a knife that I've carried since uh, 2002. And, well, not this one, but this brand. Uh, this one was actually a gift uh, from one of my students. But I trust my life to this. If this became my last ditch of defense, this is the knife that I'm trusting my life to. So I, that's my personal opinion. Uh, I used to carry a different brand uh, that also had a circle in the hole until it uh, was able to be collapsed by smacking it rearward on a table and I went, well, I'm not going to carry that anymore. So here's why this little piece is there. It's a poor man's wave feature. If it's in my pocket, all I have to do is pinch here and then draw back and see, it's open. I'll grab the full grip and there we go. So a poor man's wave feature. The next thing that I want you to realize from this is if you see that, the person obviously has some idea. Maybe they are uh, lowly trained, a little trained, but we all know that sometimes a person with a little, a little training can be very dangerous. So if you see a wave feature, a poor man's wave feature, it, acts, it allows very quick access to an edged weapon. So to sum this up, if you're carrying an edged weapon on duty, a knife. It is a tool for cleaning your fingernails, for opening boxes, for day-to-day -day tasks. Uh, be cautious about ever saying that it's a weapon. Uh, if it turns out to be a weapon because it became an improvised weapon, there it is. But that would be no different than a rock, a brick, a screwdriver, a broken bottle. Uh, you know, it'd be if, in it, if, if it was reasonable for you to deploy and employ that tool, then regardless of what it is, it is an improvised weapon at that time. The next thing is, is understanding that if you're going to choose a tool that you should carry on a day-to-day -day basis, just make sure it's something that will stay in your hand if you've got it gripped so that the, it isn't smooth, it isn't uh, uh, going to fold up on you, and isn't some sort of a cheap tool. The next thing is uh, make sure that you have other options to use to cut people out of seat belts. That you have safety shears or an edged, uh, I'm sorry, or a, a commercially created seat belt ripper or something like that. And also don't forget to try before you buy, um, or try before you pry, I'm sorry, and push the seat belt to make sure the seat belt was able to be released. Don't be roped into some of these things. And I will also tell you that if you're going to carry a tool, uh, regardless of what that tool is, you should train with that tool. You should be familiar with that tool. There's a lot of fantastic systems out there uh, covering how to use and or defend against uh, specific tools. And, and since we're discussing knives, there's some pretty fantastic systems out there that that's really all they do is edged weapon stuff. And lastly, if you see anybody with that on there, that is a, a pretty good indication that that person has an idea of what they're going to do, whether it be even understanding the first five to 12 angles of an attack and understanding that a knife slash is being kind. That's defensive. They're not trying to kill you. A knife thrust is where they're going to kill you. So uh, just, you know, think about that. This is a little bit longer, but it's some very important stuff because guess what? It's really happened. And uh, that advice that I gave to them is the same advice I'm trying to give to you is be cautious if you have to use one. Hopefully you've had some training. And if you're an administrator and you're allowing your people to carry an edged weapon on duty, uh, there is training out there that's available. So uh, I would just be very aware. Okay. Anyway, have a good day. I'll talk to you soon.